Good morning. I hope that this week is going well for you. Many of us call it Holy Week. Tomorrow's Good Friday. Easter Resurrection Sunday is around the corner. Jesus went through the mockery of a trial, and one of the key players was a fellow by the name of Herod. This wasn't the first time that, that Herod is mentioned in Scripture. This is a cautionary tale. I would suggest to you what Herod chose to do, you should go exactly the opposite direction. It starts out early uh, in Matthew's Gospel, there was conviction of sin. Because John the Baptist pointed out something that Herod did that he really shouldn't have done. We don't need to go into the whole story. But Herod did not welcome the conviction and he was not willing to turn away from it. But he wanted, I think, as James Montgomery Boyce puts it, he wanted to be religious but also he wanted to sin. And I don't think he's the first person in history who's wanted that. He wants the good appearance, but he wants to do his own thing. Then he attempted to still the voice of his conscience, which meant he wanted to put a cork in John the Baptist, and so he had him arrested, and he had him thrown in prison. And then it went even further, because he, there was a dance that was done for him, and he made this promise, I'll give you anything, even up to half my kingdom. And so his wife has her daughter say, I want the head of John the Baptist. And so he follows through on that. And he thought, like, this is ridiculous, but he thought, well, I can't be dishonored in front of my guests because I made this promise. No, you made a horrific promise and foolish promise, and now you're doubling down on it. And so he has John the Baptist beheaded for a lewd dance. All of these are really bad decisions, right? But then he gets superstitious, and he thinks that, uh, he thinks that, Jesus is John the Baptist come back to life. And we're going to find out in Luke chapter 23 that he had always wanted. In verse 8 it says, Herod was delighted at the opportunity to see Jesus because he had always heard about him, and he'd been hoping for a long time to see him perform a miracle. Well, this has been going on for like three years. Think about it. If you want to hear somebody or see them do a miracle, seek them out. You're King Herod. You can do whatever you want to do. But he never bothered to do that. I wonder how many people are like, oh yeah, I'd, I'd like to find out more about Jesus. But never follow through on it. Maybe even like to see him do a miracle, but doesn't follow through. You've, you've got to do something. So then when he finally comes in to see him, and imagine how Jesus felt towards, towards Herod. He had his cousin, his relative, John the Baptist, beheaded for no good purpose. And now it's Jesus who should be judging Herod, but Herod presumes that he is judging Jesus. And so he wanted him to do a miracle, so he asked Jesus question after question, but Jesus refused to, refused to answer. You can imagine how he felt towards Herod, but he didn't speak a word. Meanwhile, the leading priests and the teachers of the religious law stood there shouting their accusations. Then Herod and his soldiers finally began mocking and ridiculing Jesus. Herod, the judge, he's just like, oh, you're not going to do a trick for me? Well, I'm going to mock you. I'm going to ridicule you. And they finally put a royal robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. What abject disrespect. What a cautionary tale. Go the exact opposite direction of Herod. Look at the descent. It starts with God speaks to him through John the Baptist. But he doesn't do anything with it. He ignores the voice of the Lord. So listen to the voice of the Lord this Good Friday, this Easter Resurrection Sunday, every day, and go the direction that he has for you. Don't go in this direction. It starts with something small, kind of, where it's like, okay, I'm not going to listen to you. But it ends up where he's mocking him. What an absolute disgrace Herod was. And so he's a cautionary tale for us. Go the exact opposite direction. Go towards Jesus and worship him. Because some people will say, oh, someday you know, I'll tell the judge this or that. And I've seen people come into a courtroom and they thought they were going to say something and they were humbled in a courtroom. Imagine when we come before Jesus. Imagine Herod before Jesus. God bless you. Go the opposite way.